Good morning, Ms. Mulefe. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, DCJ. Are you ready? Yes, Chair. Yes. Chair, today we will be dealing with Basasa related evidence. Um, we have one witness who will be testifying today. His name is Mr. Mbulelo Baba Lokingana. Mm -hmm. He will then um, cross examine Mr. Richard LaRue. Mm -hmm. We also have Mr. Agritsi, who will be cross-examined by Mr. Wakeford. And that would be the business for today. Okay, thank you. Chair, just to remind you of the nature of today's evidence, um, Mr. Gingana is implicated by Mr. Richard LaRue in allegations that are related to the special projects that were allegedly undertaken at the expense of Basasa for high-ranking officials. Um, the chair might remember that this evidence emanates from the broad allegation that was made by Mr. Angelo Agrizzi in this respect. As mentioned, Chair, Mr. Agrizzi has, pardon me, Mr. Gingana instead, has applied to cross-examine Mr. L Richard LaRue and the chair has granted him leave to do so. Um, Mr. Gingana is joining us virtually. Good morning, Mr. Gingana. Good morning, Advocate. Now, just to summarize quickly the issues that arise between Mr. LaRue and Mr. Gingana. Mr. LaRue alleges that pursuant to the so-called special projects, Basasa installed security equipment at the residence of Mr. Gingana to the total cost of approximately 239,000 486 rand, and that such costs were incurred at the expense of Basasa. In so far as Mr. LaRue intimated to have labeled the special projects different names, he alleges that this particular project was named Project, Basasa, project Prasa, um, and Mr. LaRue alleges that it was so named on the basis that he was informed by Mr. Sivian Dlamini that Mr. Gingana was the head of procurement at Prasa. Um, Chair, in his affidavit, Mr. Gingana concedes that he did in fact have security equipment installed at his residence, um, but that this was to the amount of approximately 40,000 rands. And in so far what as... What does it say, 50? I think I saw 50 in your summary. No, no, that was the quote he was provided by Mr. Oh, okay. by Mr. Dlamini. Mm, okay. Yes. Um, and in so far as the special project was labeled Project Prasa, Mr. Gingana denies any impropriety on his part, and he does so based on the timing of events and his employment history. Um, and this will be dealt with in detail. We will also be dealing with a statement that was provided by Mr. Sivian Dlamini in reply to the chairperson's directive in terms of Regulation 10.6. So, Chair, broadly put, those are the issues that we will be dealing with today. Might I beg leave to call Mr. Gingana to take the stand? So, that uh, security uh, installations were made in his house is common cause. Yes, Chair. There may be a dispute about the monetary value yes. of those installations and that they were installed by Busasa is also common cause. And um, the only issue is that Mr. King Nanas's version is that he had made arrangements with Mr. Lamini for these installations. They were not part of a special projects or anything like that. That is correct, Chair. Yeah. And uh, it's also common cause that at a certain stage he was working for Prasa, but uh, he, as to the timing, there might be an issue about uh, whether the timing coincides or doesn't coincide with the projects. And there was a contract given by Prasa to Busasa or in a subsidiary of Busasa, is that correct? That is correct, but those are not, Mr. Gingana does not deal with any contract. Yes. But the commission is in possession of a contract that was yes. awarded to 
by Prasa. Yes, he, he might not have had a chance to deal with it. Yes, Chair. Yes. And it is on, in fact, it's not only the contract that Mr. Gingana will be assisting the Commission with in so far as, as further information, but he will also have to reply to an affidavit that was deposed to by Mr. Angelo Agrizzi, um, in which Mr. Agrizzi makes allegations relative to the special projects. But yes. for the purposes of today, Chair, we'll be dealing with the issues as between Mr. Richard LaRue and Mr. Gingan. Mm. Okay, no, that's all right. Um, it may well be that uh, uh, for a complete picture, some of the matters that the Commission is in possession of may have to be uh, mentioned to complete the picture, even if Mr. Kinnana will deal with that in due course because he hasn't had a chance. But you can reflect on it and uh, we can see whether we should, it, that should be done. Thank you, Chair. Okay, all right. Uh, good morning, Mr. Kinnana. Unmute yourself. Good morning, Chief Justice. Deputy Chief Justice, good morning, Chair. <laughs> yes, good good morning, Mr. Kimman. Um, the registrar is going to administer an oath or affirmation to you just now. Please administer the oath or affirmation. Please state your full names for the record. It's Mbulelo Babalo Kingano. Do you have any objection to taking the prescribed oath? No. Do you consider the oath binding on your conscience? Yes. Do you solemnly swear that the evidence you will give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, please raise your yes. right hand and say, so help me God. Help me God. Thank you, Mr. Kingana, and uh, thank you for availing yourself to assist the commission, Mr. Kingana. And uh, Ms. Mulefe, I understand Mr. Kingana is legally represented. Yes, Chair, I had forgotten to mention that. I apologize. Yes. May they uh, place themselves on record? Yeah. His legal team can place themselves on record from where they are if their mic is working. Uh, yes, Mr. Commissioner, um, I'm Advocate Mauna Tala. I'm the advocate representing um, Mr. Bulelo. Um, Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Mulefe. Thank you, Chair. Chair, the totality of the exhibits that we'll be referring to today are contained in a bundle that I believe has been placed before you. Um, and it's, it's labeled bundle number five. Yes, Busasa Bundle 5, yes. And in that bundle chair is contained Exhibit T3, um, Exhibit T21, and Exhibit T19, as well as Exhibit T34, which has not yet been entered into evidence. The other T-series exhibits have been previously dealt with. Um, the matters of which have been placed before you, Chair. So uh, I beg leave for that bundle to be entered into the record. Um, I see a divider, or oh, I see T3, I see T21, but I don't see T19. You mentioned T19. It's the very first one, Chair. Oh. Oh, okay, all right. Okay, uh, let's not admit the bundle, but let's admit the specific affidavits. But let's do that. With regard to the one for Mr. Kingana, uh, I suggest you get him to confirm his signature and that um, this is the, his affidavit that he deposed to and the contents are true and correct, then I can admit it. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Gingana, can you please have a bundle exhibit T19 in front of you? I 
Good. Now, in exhibit T19, you will see that there are two sets of numbers at the top of the page. The first is a black set of numbers. It starts with Bosasa 5. Then on the extreme right side is numbering in the color red, and it's, the page number is preceded by T19 MBG. Do you see that? Yes. Okay, can you please turn with me to page four? We will be referring to the black numbers. Page four. Thank you. Right through to page 14, is that your first statement to the commission? Yes. And on page, yes, Chair. Thank you. And on page 14, is that your signature that appears on that page? Page 14. Yes. And the date of the 22nd of February 2019, is that the date on which you signed the statement? Yes, Chair. Now, I'm made to understand that you wish to supplement your statement in so far as it relates to your status of employment. Is that correct? That's correct, Chair. And I was handed this morning a supplementary affidavit by your legal representatives in which you set out what your status of employment is. Yes. Now, can I, take yes, you, Chair. can I take you back to page four? That's the very first page of that statement, in particular to paragraph one. Can you just hold, uh, because that document is it attached on the same bundle? So, Mr. Gingana, we are still on T19. We are still looking at yes. your first statement to the commission, the one that you okay. just confirmed to have signed. And I'm taking you back That's to correct. The, I'm taking you back to the first page, in particular to paragraph one. Yes. Now, paragraph one. Yes, paragraph one states that you're an adult male currently employed by the South African Civil Aviation Authority as a senior manager supply chain management. And you state further that I am presently on suspension due to allegations raised in this judicial commission relating to myself. Is that correct? That's correct, Chair. Is, is this still the position? No, Chair. And what is the correction you wish to make in that regard? The correction is that uh, since my suspension was uh, done, I have consequently been dismissed for because of this allegation that was raised by my employer. They, well, Ms. they dismissed Ms. me. I'm sorry, Ms. Mr. King. Ms. Mulefe, I think we should admit this affidavit first as it is, uh, and whether or not it's necessary to whether or not it's necessary to have a supplementary affidavit or statement correcting this is doubtful because this affidavit is talking about his status at the time he deposed to this affidavit. So it remains correct. That was the position then. Insofar as the position may have changed, his oral evidence should be enough unless that statement affidavit deals with other things as well. Thank you, Chair. We'll deal with the supplementary at a later station. Yeah, that's... All right, Mr. Gingana, do you confirm the correctness of this first statement to the Commission? Yes, Chair, I can confirm the statement. Thank you. I'm now going to take you to um, your second statement to the Commission. 
You do want us to admit this one first. Oh, it's contained in the same bundle, Chair. I thought we were going to... No, no, we won't admit the bundle. We'll admit the each affidavit. Okay, so it's contained in, in T19. Yeah. So is the chairperson directing that we, conf we admit each statement in it, T19? Well, each affidavit will give it a separate exhibit number. As it pleases so you, So if, if you originally had T19 and T19 maybe creates problems, we will amend it and say T19A or T19B as we may see necessary. Thank you, Chair. So, May we please then admit Mr. Gingana's statement to the Commission that is dated 22 February 2019 as T19.1. Thank you. Mr. Mbulelo Babalo Gingana's affidavit that starts at page four is admitted as an exhibit and will be marked as exhibit. T nineteen point one. Thank you, Chair. Okay, so that that one is done. Mr. Gingana, in the same bundle, can you then turn with me to page nineteen? Page nineteen. Yes. It's T nineteen. Are you there? She's yes. referring to the statement, your statement that comes immediately after the first statement. Yes. Are you there? Yes, I'm there, Chair. Okay. Mr. Gingana, from that page, page 19, all the way through page 22, is that your second statement to the Commission? That's correct, Chair. And on page 22, the Commissioner's stamp is the 24th of June 2019. However, it appears that you did not um, put down a date on which you signed the statement. Do you see that? Yes, I can see that, Chair. Did you sign the statement in the presence of a Commissioner? Yes, I did sign the statement in front of the Commissioner on the 24th of June. Thank you. And do you confirm the correctness of the statement? Yes, I can confirm the correctness of the statement. Thank you. Chair, with your leave, may we please admit the second statement as T19.2. Um, chair, 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 I just want to bring to the Commission's attention that as, yes. we, go, as we go into the, the, the bundles, um, we were given a, a different uh, numbered uh, bundle and we were told um, the early, in the early hours of the morning that uh, this bundle has changed. Now, we've got the old version, and we're obviously trying to keep up. So some of these things, um, oh. we might struggle a bit in, in getting to them. But I, I did also explain to my learned colleague that we couldn't renumber at the time that they've given us the, the new bundle. Yes, yes. Okay. And, and I'm, I'm a bit worried that some of the statements, as my outline confirms, we might not follow. Yes, okay. Chair, as, as, can, I, can I clarify and then assist? So, um, Mr. Gingana's team was given the bundle with the red numbering by the Secretariat or the documents team. Um, last night, we then had a bundle that had the black numbering under Basasa 5. So, what I propose to do then, Chair, is to refer to both the red numbering, which my learned colleagues have, as well as the black numbering. That would be fine. That, that, that will be in order. Yes, that would be fine. Thank you, Chair. Okay, just uh, Mr. Kingana, uh, do you confirm that the signature that appears above your name at page 22 is your signature? Yes, I can confirm that the signature above my name is my signature, Chair. Okay. Okay, all right. The affidavit of Mr. Mbulelo Babado Kinana that starts at page 19 is admitted as an exhibit and will be marked as exhibit T19.2. Thank you, Chair. Okay, all right. Then, Chair, in this same bundle under the T19 series is a statement by Mr. Rich Richard LaRue. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a statement in response to Mr. Gingana's first statement. 
Um, if the chair so permits, might we tender that statement as T19.3? Uh, yes, Chair, that appears at page, the red numbers would be page Wait. 13. Uh, and the black numbering would be page 15. Yes, we'll provisionally admit it as uh, an exhibit, but when Mr. Leroux uh, takes the witness stand, then we'll go through the formalities, okay? Thank you, Chair. And then have it admitted finally then. Uh, provisionally, this should be admitted as exhibit. T19.3, please. T19.3. Uh, Mr. Richard Leroux's affidavit that starts at page 15 will be provisionally admitted and marked as Exhibit T19.3. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Right. Mr. Gingana, in essence, as you might have heard me say earlier, the allegations that were raised by Mr. Leroux against yourself is firstly that there was a security assessment and equipment installed at your residence. Secondly, that the equipment cost in the amount of just over 48,000. Third, that the total amount inclusive of labor and travel is in the amount of just over 239,000. And lastly, Mr. Leroux alleged that this was pursuant to the so-called special projects of high profile officials of, Bas of Basasa, by Basasa, pardon me. To this end, he then stated that the particular project concerning you was named Project Prasa, and he says that it was because he was informed by Mr. Dlamini that you are the head of procurement at Prasa. So in essence, those are the allegations that we'll be dealing with today. I'm going to take you to bundle T3. And this is the first statement, Chair, of Mr. LaRue to the Commission. In particular, Mr. Gingana, I'm referring you to paragraph 50 of that statement. Are you yes, there? I'm on paragraph 50, Chair. Mr. Kinana, there is quite some noise coming from your end uh, from time to time. And when you are paging through, if there is somebody who can do something about that, I don't know whether it's something that needs technicians. If it is, the technicians should look at it so that uh, we don't have that noise. Okay, all right, let's continue in the meantime. Thank you, Chair. So, Mr. Gingana, I've referred you to paragraph 50 of Mr. Richard LaRue's first statement to the Commission, and that appears in bundle T3. Uh, just hang on one sec, Ms. Munefe. It appears as if Mr. Gingana is with somebody where he is. Do we know who the person is and what the position is? Does the legal team know? Mr. Commissioner, yes. Um, the uh, person sitting to the next to the witness is the candidate attorney of my attorney, uh, Ms. Pumla, uh, from Malatala Um She's just sitting there so that she can help with arranging, because the bundles, obviously, as we've indicated, were numbered this morning. Some, some of these things uh, the, the witness might not follow. So she was placed there just to assist. Uh, yes. uh, the commission's legal team, has it reflected on that? No, Chair, I was not aware that he is with someone or that he would be with someone in the morning. Yeah. Um, but I think to the extent that we can see Mr. Gingana um, and his mic remains on, then I think we should be able to proceed, Chair. Mm, I am concerned about it. Normally, we would get somebody uh, to be in another room 
And if there is a need for that person to come into the room where the witness is for purposes of assisting with the bundle, then it's announced that person goes in and then leaves. So I'm a, I'm a little concerned about it. Um, let me take a five minutes adjournment. Can you, can the two teams talk talk about it? And uh, when I come back, you you can indicate whether I should be concerned or not. Thank you, Chair. We, obviously, what's important is that the integrity of the evidence given by Mr. Kimana should not be uh, put in question because of arrangements that are not, have been made. But at the same time, when if and when he needs assistance, it should be possible. But it should be possible for somebody to explain to him um, how the band works. This is somebody who was, at some stages, I understand the poor position, acting chief procurement officer of, of, of PASA, so it should not really be a problem for somebody to explain how to find his way through the documents in the bundle. And the bundle is a small bundle. It's not a big bundle. Thank you, Chair. Hi, Chair.
Yes, Ms. Mulefe. Thank you, Chair. Um, the candidate attorney who was in the room with Mr. Gingana has been asked to leave the room. Mm. Should it be necessary, she can return back to the room. In mm. so far as the confusion around the numbering of the bundles, as I earlier proposed, Chair, I will refer first to the red numbers, um, which Mr. Gingana has, and then in addition refer to the black numbers. Yes, no, that's fine. Maybe as you, as you refer to the numbers, you can just say red number this, black number this, to make sure everyone knows which one is the black number, which one is the red one. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, okay, all right. Um, Mr. Gingana, did you follow that? Your mic is off. Can you hear us, Mr. Gingana? I can hear you, Chair. I'm sorry, I was still uh, muted. Yes, okay. Ms. Um, Mulef has just indicated that uh, with regard to the number, the page numbers in the bundle, she will call both the red numbers and the black numbers. So when she says, turn to page so and so, so she will say, turn to red, page red number this and black number this. So if you have only the red numbers at the top of each page, you focus on the red number. Those of us who have uh, black numbers of both black and red will focus on black. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot, Chair. Okay, Ms. Mulefe. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Gingana, before the short adjournment, I had referred you to Exhibit T3. Yes. And I referred you specifically to Paragraph 50. Five zero. Yes. And that's yes. black numbers 34. There are no red numbers. This is an old statement, Chair, before the red numbering was introduced. Okay. And it has the statement number as page 10, but the black number for the record's purpose is page 34. Yeah, okay. Now, at paragraph 50, Mr. Richard LaRue alleged that he was instructed firstly by Sivian Lamene and Mr. Angela Agrisi to do a security analysis and installation for a certain Ms. Dambulelo, and he states the area. He then says that the project name was called Project Prasa. He says that the, the equipment that was installed at your residence is an alarm system, as well as a full CCTV IP-based system, a brand new gate motto, and an intercom system. Do you confirm that this equipment was installed at your house? Yes, in line with my statement, I can confirm that this equipment was installed at my place. Thank you. Now, we will deal with the costs in a bit. Um, so firstly, in conceding to the security equipment having been fitted at your house, the chair is also to understand that you also concede to it having been fitted by the company Basasa. Since I have received this, then I concede that it was fitted by Busasa, but it was said these people are from a company which Sivion Dlamini was a director in. And do you know Mr. Sivion Dlamini? Yes. How do I you know Mr. Sivion Dlamini. How do you know him? We met with Mr. Sivion Dlamini in an expo sometime in 2013 14. It was a security expo at Galata, and we exchanged numbers and we started chatting as general friends. So would you say that you have been friends with Mr. Sivian Dlamini since around 2013-2014? Yes. And did Mr. Dlamini have anything to do with the security upgrade at your residence? Yes. How did he become involved? Sibion Lamini came to my place. We met, we had uh, communicated that we can meet at home. 
And in that private uh, casual meeting, when he was just checking, he found out that I had some security, uh, which, which is there, but it's outdated. But this has been uh, one of my key plans to upgrade my security. So we engaged on this issue and we, I asked him what needs to be done because he was uh, in the security space. And he gave me an indicator of about plus minus 50,000 to actually upgrade what I had at the time. And when was this visit by Mr. Lamenia at your house? It was in 2016. Right. Then, insofar as Mr. Agriti is said to have been involved, firstly, do you know who Mr. Angelo Agriti is? I happen to know Mr. Agriti through the things that he has ventilated in the commission. And so before he appeared at the commission, did you know Mr. Greetsy? No. Now, in reply to your assertion that you do not know Mr. Greetsy, Mr. LaRue alleges that you are not being honest with the commission. Um, can I, can you turn with me to exhibit T19? And T19 or T16, isn't it? Well, the, it should have been T19, but you would yes, have it as T16. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And if you can turn to the red numbering is 15 and the black numbering is 17. Okay. Is the one with my statement, am I correct? Yes, that's the bundle that contains your application. And okay. in that application, your statement is first, followed by that is Mr. LaRue's statement. So I'm taking you to that particular statement by Mr. LaRue. Okay, I'm getting there. That's the T19.3. Yes. The red numbering that you would have would be page 15. I'm referring you to paragraph five of that statement, which starts okay. on page 14, but the contents there are about on page 15. Are you there? I am there. Thank you. Now, Mr. Richard LaRue says that, firstly, you're not being honest in denying that you know or spoke to Mr. Agrizi. He says that he was present at the house on a Saturday afternoon when both Mr. Agrizi and Mr. Dlamini had a meeting with you, and that he, being Mr. Richard LaRue, waited outside the premises, and only after he was requested to go in and do a survey of the house um, after the meeting concluded. He then says that he specifically remembers this as Mr. Agrizi fetched him, this is Mr. LaRue, in a gold Maserati and went with him to the house in order to do a survey of what security equipment is needed. Um, do you have a response to that statement? I have responded in my affidavit and I clearly indicated that I do not know Mr. Agrizi at all. Have you ever met? I had no. I have never met him to discuss security issues at all. And having come to know who Mr. Egrizi is in these proceedings, as you say, would you recall whether, for a fact, you had met him before? No, I can't recall meeting him. All right. Are, are you? Uh, having seen him uh, give evidence in the commission, I assume you have seen him, uh, or having seen his pictures in, on television or newspapers, are you definite that 
you have never met that man or are you saying you don't recall that you ever met him but it is possible that you did meet him well i never met with this guy busy yeah. on any occasion on any occasion especially around my security upgrades yes okay miss mulefa thank you chair now um mr gingana you've told the chair about the discussion you had with mr dlamini you've um also just denied the allegations by mr leru um in your discussion with Mr. Dlameni that you earlier referred to, you say he gave you an estimate of the cost of the security upgrade. Did I have that correctly? Yes. Now, in that discussion, what did you and Mr. Dlameni agree on insofar as what would follow having been given that estimate? Well, we agreed that it will be done when I'm getting my bonus after September. Uh, that's when I'm going to be ready for the installation because I would settle that at that time. Did you agree to receiving a quotation prior to the security installation? No, there was no written quotation, but it was a verbal quotation. And what was your agreement with Mr. Dlamini insofar as the payment for the costs? Well, now that we had uh, agreed on the figure, my expectation was when the installation is going to be done, we are also going, I'm also going to get an invoice which I have to pay, which never came. When you say which never came, are you referring to the invoice? The invoice. Did you, as at the point of discussing the security upgrade, have any agreement about the payment terms of the installation? Well, I was going to afford the amount that was estimated because I would say uh, I, I, I knew that I would have it and set it aside. Okay, so if I understand you correctly, when you say you were not going to be able to afford, is this at the point of your discussion about this possibly costing 50,000 Rand, and you saying you will have to wait until you receive your bonus in September 2016? Do I have that correctly? I would like to clear something. It's, I did not say I could not afford the system, which is 50,000. I said I am going to be ready after September with the okay. 50,000 because I'm having some additional income. Okay, thank you. No, now I have that clearly. Now, in so far as, and we'll get back to the payment terms, um, in so far as the equipment at your house. When was the equipment um, is installed at your house? It was installed in March, April, I think it was March, April 2017. And before the security upgrade, did you know of any other costs that would be associated with the equipment itself? No. Did you know where the labor costs would be costs that you would incur? I thought the cost was inclusive or on the 50,000 that was given as an estimate. Is that what Mr. Dlamini said to you? Yes. We agreed on that figure. So Mr. Dlamini said to you that the cost of your security upgrade for the equipment that we've just taken the chair through would cost approximately 50,000 rands and that this would be inclusive of labor. That was my understanding. But did he, ex 
did he explicitly say so? No, when we agreed on a particular figure, we agreed on a ballpark figure, which I can actually put on the side and reserve it for the installation. We never actually broken down the 50,000 of what is it that is uh, going to be costing how much. Okay. So now that you're told that the installation and upgrade would cost 50,000 Rand, and in your mind, it includes labor costs, did you then budget for 50,000 Rands as soon as September yes. 2016 came? Yes, I did. So you put aside 50,000 Rands for purposes of the installation? Yes, I did. All right, I'm going to refer you to what Mr. LaRue says the costs of the equipment was. Um, can we go to exhibit T21? That is the statement of Mr. Richard LaRue. Um, in particular, I'm going to refer you to the red numbering chair is 19, and the black numbering is 58. I've got T19. No, no, Mr. Kingana, I'm taking you to exhibit T21, please. Can I request... Uh the assistant to assist with this uh, because the numbering here has not been very good. So she can come in to... or you can come in, assist you, and uh, then leave the room again. Okay, thanks. Can I just be a loud? No, don't go away, Mr. Kinnana. No, I just had to call her. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> She's not in the room, Chairperson. Oh, so, I thought yeah, she would be next her, door. We'll send her a message. Uh, she, she'll get a message from us right now. Oh, okay, all right. Che, can I try again? Okay. Um, Mr. Gingana, you had the bundle. Mr. Gingana, Mr. Gingana, just before your yes, just before she assists you, just listen to Miss Mulefe and see whether you won't manage without assistance. Just listen to Miss Mulefe. Thank you, Mr. Gingana. I'm, I'm going to try and assist. So what you had before I referred you to this other bundle was T19, which is your application bundle. In that bundle, it is your affidavit, Mr. LaRue's affidavit, as well as your further reply. Now, the bundle I'm referring to you to is written Exhibit 21. Hang, and on, hang, hang on. No, Mr. Gingana. You are, not going to it, hear, uh, you are not going to hear Ms. Mulefe if you keep on talking to uh, your, the candidate attorney while she's speaking. So when she's speaking, indicating where you are going to find the document, just listen to, it, to her. If, despite her explaining, you can't find it, then we'll call you the candidate attorney. Is that all right? That's correct, Chair. I've got the page. You have got the page now. Okay, all right. Yes. And the candidate attorney has left the room? Yes, Chair. Okay, all right. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Gignana, I was referring you to paragraph 89 of that exhibit. Paragraph 89. Yes. And that appears on the red numbers, page 19 and the black numbers chair, page 58. Yes, I've got it. I've got it, chair. Uh, Thank you. At paragraph 89, and this is Mr. Richard LaRue's statement, just to orientate you, he sets out the breakdown of the costs of the equipment that was installed at, at your residence. Um, and he has provided a little table which is a summary of the annexures that he has attached as RLR13. Now, in that table, Mr. Gingana, he provides first the date 
that's the first column. The second column is the reference number of the particular invoice. The third column is the branch at which this invoice was produced. And lastly, the last column is indicated there as debit, and under that are different amounts. Now, in his yes, allegations, thank you. In his allegations, he states here that the approx approximate cost of this equipment was roughly 48,686. Do you see that? Yes, I can see that figure. Do you dispute that figure? Well, I am not disputing the figure because it refers to the equipment that he's, he's saying was installed by him. Yes. And he has, he has some attachments in Annexa RL, RLR 13, where he defines the things that are equivalent to things that were installed. And do you agree that as according to those invoices, that is indeed the equipment that was installed at your house? Yes, sure. And your figure earlier, as I pointed out to the chair, was a rough estimation of 38,000 for the same equipment. Is that correct? That's correct, Chair. Do you take any issue with this particular figure of 48,000? Well, I also did my analysis when I was to respond by going out and getting some internet quotations of the similar make of equipment that was installed. That's how I arrived at that figure. I understand that. I'm referring to Mr. LaRue's figure, Mr. Gingana. Do you take any issue with the figure that he has provided based on the invoices that he's provided to the commission? No, that's what he has provided. And I cannot dispute the figures from the suppliers because the suppliers are from those invoices uh, that supply him documents. I All mean, right. it's, uh, you know, Thank you. Now, if we look again at the same table, the dates that he has summarized um, range from the 26th of April 2016 to 10 May 2016. In fact, there are only three invoices, so I'll take you through them. The first one is the 26th of April 2016. Do you see that? I can see that. The second is also the 26th of April 2016. Do you see that? I can see that. And the third is the 10th of May 2016. Do you see that? Yes, I can see that. All right. Um, now, in your version, you indicated to the chair that you had wanted the security upgrades to be installed after September 2016. And you earlier intimated that the installation, according to your recollection, was around March, April, 2017. That's correct, Chair. All right, can I then take you still in the same bundle, Mr. Gingana, to Annex RLR 13, and that appears in that same bundle that is in front of you at, pardon me, at the red numbering page 108, and the black numbering, page 147. I'm on 108, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Gingana. That is annex to RLR13. Overleaf, that's where Mr. LaRue attaches the three invoices. I just want you to confirm that the total amounts reflected in those invoices are as reflected in the summary that Mr. LaRue has provided. If you go to the first invoice starts at page 109, the red numbers, and black numbering 148. That's part one of the invoice. As you can see on the bottom right of that invoice, it says continued. Do you see that? 
Yes, I can see that. And overleaf on page 1110, being the red numbers, black numbers being page 149, a total amount of 40,576 and 60 cents is provided. Do you confirm that? That's the figure I see. And the date on that invoice at the top is 2604-2016. Do you see that? Yes, that's what I see. And the description of what is being purchased there is provided. Do you see that? Yes, I can see that. Do you dispute any of the um, equipment that was purchased? Uh, I'm not disputing the equipment that was purchased. I'm actually disputing the date of the purchase, which okay. is the 26th of April, 2016. And my installation was done in April, 2017. So you are saying that this date cannot be correct. Do I understand that to be what you're saying? I'm not saying the date is not correct. The date is what it is, mm -hmm. but I only got the equipment in 2017 April. But according to these invoices, it was bought in April 2016. So the question is, Whose equipment was this? Is this still a new equipment? Was I given a second third equipment in this arrangement? You know, these are some of the questions uh, I will be raising. All right, let's move on to the second invoice. And that's overleaf at page red numbering triple one, black numbering 150. And the amount that is reflected at the bottom right um, Mr. Gingana is three thousand three hundred and fifty-one and sixty cents. Do you confirm? Yes, that's the figure I can see. The date is also twenty-six o four twenty sixteen. Do you confirm? Yes, I can see the date as the twenty-sixth of April, twenty sixteen. Then on the next page, page one one two, red numbers page one one two, black numbers page one five one. At the bottom right corner is another amount of 4,760 rand and 64 cents. Do you confirm? Yes, that's what I see on the invoice. And the date there is the 10th of May, 2016. Do you confirm? That's the date that appears on the invoice, yes. All right. Can I take you then to the annex that follows, which is on red page numbering 113 and black pa black numbering 152. So it's just the next page, Mr. Gingana. An extra yes. RLR14. Are you there? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Are you able to identify what appears on that page? Yes, I can identify what appears on the page. Am I correct in saying it appears to be a screenshot? It is correct. It is a screenshot with a date 16 April 2017. And is it a screenshot of a message? Yes, there is a message that is there, which is a message I sent after we had a power cut and the system was not working at the gate. And or Richard's number was given to me by Sylvia Lamini. And I sent him a message to look for the override key, which they did not leave. All right. With us. I'd, I'd like you to please. I'm sorry, Miss Molefe. Did you say black numbers 153? Yes, Chair. Uh, there may be, seems to be more than one message. I'm not sure which one. Yes, I'm going to, to, going to, to take that. Mr. Yeah, um, Gingana okay. through it. Thank mm -hmm. you, Chair. Mr. Gingana, can you please read the message that appears starting as Morning Richard? Uh, morning Richard, I have a chat. 
challenge here. I'm locked in without a key to disable the gate to manual. There is no power for the area since 3 a.m. Do you have anyone on standby to assist me with the key? And then there's another message after that. Can you please read that as well? Must I read my address now? You can skip yeah. your address. <laughs> just you can just, just say uh, <laughs> you can say it's your name and the, the uh, your home address given without saying the home address. Okay. That's why I was asking before I went there. No, no, no uh, thank you, Mr. Fine. You are, you are you right correct. to ask, yeah. Thank you. It's, it's my name and my address where it is. Mm. Now, immediately above those two messages is a date, which you've earlier indicated, of the 16th April 2017. Do you confirm? Yes. And what seems to be an indication of time there is 10.36. Do you confirm? Yes. Did you send uh, this message? It's 10.36 in the morning. 10.36 uh. in the morning. Thank you, Chair. Yes. Did you send that message? I did. On the date cited there? Exactly, yes. And who were you sending it to? To Richard Leru. And his response appears at the bottom of that screenshot although it's not the entire response. Um, just to read a chair, just say, sir, I'm just in church at the moment. I'll be out in about 20 minutes. Then it says, can I arrange? And the remainder part is not there. But do you confirm that, Mr. Gingan? I can confirm that, what I'm saying here. It and looks, do you confirm? It like, Ms. Lefe, the part that you, or at least part of the part that you say, uh, you didn't read is it looks like uh, and I arrange when I'm out and then of course I think it continues the chair has a better <laughs> eyesight than me thank you I'm indebted do you confirm uh, do you confirm Anna? that uh, mr. Uh, mr. Kim Anna that yeah. it says when I'm out yeah as he was saying he said he was in church. Yes. So in 20, about 20 minutes, he can arrange when he's uh, when I'm when he's out of church. Okay. Yes. All right. Can you explain to the chair what circumstances brought about you sending this message to Mr. Richard Leroux? I requested uh, a number after the installation because of the power uh, load shedding, which happened. I phoned Sibion Lamini and requested who can I contact to assist us because the key has not been left to bypass the gate or put it to manual. So he gave me that number. That's the number I communicated to. And he said, it's Richard Lero. And had you ever communicated with Mr. Richard LaRue before this occasion? Well, there is a message if you go, it's just that unfortunately my phone uh, was my web phone that I was using, which uh, had to be returned. I, I couldn't get the previous messages because Richard sent me a message earlier to say that he will do the program. And uh, uh, you are saying, Mike, to program it for you besides today's thanks or, or Wednesday. That was a message from Richard, as he has claimed that he was the installer. Can you recall when about you would have spoken to Mr. Richard LaRue before the 16th of April, 2017? I think that is the time that's the week, because it was the first week and when I had this challenge. I think that's the time when they installed the system. So other than on these two occasions, had you ever spoken to Mr. Richard LaRue? Not that I can recall of. Had you ever spoken to any of the officials who had installed the equipment at your house? No. 
All right, then at still on the same. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, did you say that uh, you never met him when he and his team installed the, uh, made the installations in your house? No, Chairperson, I never met the installers with my response. Uh, I hope I'm not creating an echo. Uh, in line with my response in my affidavit, the installation was done whilst I was working and it took an estimate of three days to do it. Mm. So, so when Mr. Richard Leroux says uh, he and his team installed, made the installations in your house, uh, are you in a position to deny that or you accept that if that's what he says, then that is what happened? Mr. Leroux may be right to say he is the one who installed the system because the system was installed. Yes. Okay, Ms. Ms. Mulefe. Are you able to recall um, who was at your premises, your house, when the installations were done? I had the lady who was assisting me at the time but unfortunately she passed on last year. Okay, thank you. And would she have been present on all three, over the three days, as you say, when the installations were being done? The communication was between me and her. I would advise her when I leave in the morning that so-and-so, a company will come and do the following. Others will be coming either to repair whatever in the house. And when those people are at the gate, then she will phone or buzz me. And then I will say, OK, you can open for them. They are the ones that I said they will be working on an item or so in the house. Because we were the two people that were living there. Yes. So who did you communicate with in respect of the installations being done? It was Sivion Zamin. On all three days. He is the one who actually told me that they are now coming to do installation, then I arranged for them to be given access by the lady who assisted me at home. So how did you get to communicate with Mr. LaRue? How did you come into contact this, with Mr. LaRue. It's when there was this incident, as I indicated. Okay, and who provided you with his number? I would assume someone would have provided a number. It's Sivion Tami. All right, thank you. Still in the same bundle, Mr. Gingana, can I refer you to page 20, red numbering page 20, and it's black numbering 59, Chair. I'm referring you, Mr. Gingana, to paragraph 98. Okay, can, can you, is it the R, RLR or the T numbers? The T20. same, T21, the same bundle you have in front of you. If you can turn a couple yes. of pages back to page 20, the red numbers, page 20. Okay, in page 20, I've got sorry for making the noise. I'm going back to page 20. Page 20, page 20 You want me to go to T2020, T21, the same bundle that's in front of you, where we've been looking at the screenshot messages. I'm now taking you back into okay. this statement at page 20, 
I'm taking you in particular to paragraph 98. Is it not going to be easier if you just mention the page number only? It Ms. seemed Lefe. to be confusing. Maybe page, forget the about the key numbers, Mr. Kingana. Just listen to the page number and follow the page number. Okay. Okay, just tell him the page number again. So it's the red numbers at the top, page 20. So look for so the page it's... number only. Don't for worry about T. Mr. Gingana, do you have Exhibit 21 open in front of you? The very same one that we have been looking at with yes. the... Mr. Did, Mr. did you manage? I'm only Richard Bickman. Yes. Now I'm referring you to paragraph 98, and that appears on the red numbering 20. Okay. Are you there? I'm I am there. Thank you. Now, at that paragraph, Mr. Richard LaRue speaks about a paradox wireless alarm system. Do you confirm? Well, uh, what I saw in the house is something else, which I've reflected it as a, there's another name, but not paradox. Okay, it's not but written paradox. Let's first confirm what he's saying there. He's saying there that um, he speaks about costs. He refers to costs in the preceding paragraphs. And in this particular paragraph, he deals with um, the costs being to the exclusion of the Paradox wireless system, which came with a keypad and internal security eyes, PSU, siren, and battery. And he goes on further to say that which he could approximate to have cost between 8,000 to 10,000. Do you see that? Yes, I can see that. Now, you were telling the chair a few moments ago that what you saw in your house was something different. Is the chair to understand that there was never a paradox wireless alarm system, which is said to have come with a keypad and internal security eyes installed at your house? There is a system, but the name appearing on the system is different from Paradox. So the only issue it's that you written. have, I'm sorry, I, I, I intervened while you're speaking. I'm saying the only thing that is written on this system is not Paradox. There is another name that is written. But it is the same system. Well, I'm not sure to say it is the same system if the names are not the same. Well, say for the name. Uh, there it says that it's a paradox. Okay. But is there a wireless is there a wireless alarm system which comes with a keypad and internal security eyes installed at your premises? Chair, sure. there is no dispute about the items installed. But what we are talking to now are the items as they appear on and as they have been installed. So that's why I am saying we have an item there which is not written the word paradox. And there is a system that is there. Thank you. And he says further that it costs between 8,000 to 10,000. Yes, I can see that. Do you confirm the cost of the system? As per his write-up, that's what he is presenting, but I cannot confirm if it is the right figure because I don't know where it is uh, based on. Do you have an idea of how much the system costs? Well, I think there was a reference on some of the things that I've checked, but uh, I don't have the estimate figure now. And I wanted to go back to the name that is appearing, which is Texacom, T-E-X-E-C-O-M. 
Okay, can I help you then by referring you to your statement where you list the equipment that was installed and perhaps you can assist us as the chair. Okay. Um, I'm going to then take you back uh, to... Ms. Murphy, I say we are at half past 11. We didn't take the break at half past 11. Uh, ask that question and when he has answered, we take the tea break. Thank you, Chair. Um, Mr. Gingana, I'm referring you to your bundle, T19. It might be marked T16, where, where the copy you have, and we apologize for that. That's the bundle that has your application. I'm referring you now in particular. Yes. Yes. I'm referring you in particular to the red numbering page 10. Do you have it? Page 10. And the black numbering yes, for the I record do. is page 12. Thank you. At paragraph 30.1, yes. starting on the previous page at paragraph 30, you list um, the equipment that was installed and the cost estimates. You say there that the following equipment with current cost estimates were installed at my home. Is that correct? That's correct. Now, on the list of equipment that you provide, from 30.1 to 30.4, is there any particular item that in your dispute, in so far as paradox is concerned, would be the correct um, equipment according to your evidence? Well, as I detailed, those are the things that I are found and they are installed. And based on my statement, those were the items that I had to get at the estimated value for them. Okay, so on those items, are you able to point the chair um, to any of the items where uh, a wireless alarm system which comes with a keypad and internal security eyes is listed? There is something, a home alarm system on yes. 30.1. Is that the system that would be the wireless alarm system which came with a keypad and internal security eyes? That's the one I call it, which may be equivalent to what Richard is referring to. Okay. Um, can we take okay, a break? Okay, let's take the tea break. Thank you. Uh, we will resume, resume at 10 to 12. We are Jen.
Oh, Mr. Kingana. Mr. Kingana. Yes, sir, we are about to start again. Okay, I'm, I'm taking my seat. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Uh, we are unable to see you, sir. Oh, there we go. We can see you now. Thank you. Okay, let's continue. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Gimnana, just before the short adjournment, we were dealing with paragraph 30.1 of your statement, and that appears at the red numbered page 10, and you were drawing a distinction between what Mr. Richard LaRue has referred to as a paradox system in line with your paragraph 30.1. Um, which you have referred to as a home alarm system, is that correct? Yes. But now even in your description of the home alarm system, there's no particular system other than that general description of it being a home alarm system. Do you agree? Yes. So can you identify any other equipment on that list? from now 30.2 to 30.4, um, upon which you base your dispute of a paradox system having been installed. Okay, uh, thanks Chair. The alarm system that is in my place is, that's why I was saying I've got a name here which says, I'm trying to get to the name, Texacon. And is there anywhere in your statement where we find it, Mr. Gingana? Well, in my statement, I used that to check the value of that system. Okay, but you have just um, referred the chair to a particular name, and if I heard it correctly, you said TechCon. Did I get that right? It's TechSecom. Can you spell that for the chair? T E X E C O M. Now, that particular name, TechSecom. Where is it located in your statement? The, the name, as I indicated, is not located in my statement when I did my statement. But when I took some of the pictures and to, to make sure that I have some pictures, which if required, I will share. It's written text.com, but not, I couldn't pick up a, the one that Mr. Leroux is mentioning in his statement. Okay, now in your exercise of obtaining estimate costs, were you able to obtain one for a Texacom system? Yes, which 
is the one that is installed. And what figure did you arrive at? The figure, the current value was around 20,000. And is that what is set out in paragraph 30.1 of your statement? Is that amount the code for this Texacom system you refer to? Yes. Right. Now, still staying on bundle T21, which is the other bundle we've been referring to. The one that Mr. LaRue's statement where he speaks about the paradox system, that bundle. Okay. I'm referring you to the red numbering page 20 and it's black numbering page 59. It's page 20, I'm there. What's the black numbers? Uh... It's page, it's 59, Chair. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Gingana, can we go to paragraph 95 on that page? Okay. Now, in paragraph 95, Mr. Richard LaRue sets out the estimate costs of the installation and vehicle travel, which um, he's broken down excluding the cost of the equipment. You will recall that on Mr. LaRue's version, the cost of the equipment was roughly 48,686. So now in paragraph 95, he provides a breakdown of the additional costs that were related to the installation. Do you see that? I can see them. And he starts off at paragraph 95.1 by stating that the labor cost was for 20 days. Do you see that? I can see that. Do you dispute or confirm the 20 days that he has indicated? I dispute that. On what basis? I am of the view that they only took three days to install. I wanted him to give me the works order and also the project plan and the sign off, which must be supported in this costing that he has done. If he is also qualified to do cost analysis or analyst for Busasa, he must bring proof in terms of mileage, kilometers, and everything that he's purporting to have done. And it must be a justification for me to consider it. But I am of the view, I have three days. They were not building an alarm system around my house. 20 days is a month. Okay, so you're just- They should have seen me in 20. All right. Uh, Mr. Kingana, you they've given a certain a certain figures with regard to the cost of the equipment they installed at your house. You may be disputing uh, those figures, but uh, are you in a position to say that the equipment would be about 40 or 50,000 rand, or you might not agree with them in terms of 239,000 rand, but you would accept maybe that Nevertheless, the equipment is not would not have cost less than a figure such as hundred thousand rand, or you say no, no, no. This equipment that they installed uh, is would be around forty thousand, fifty thousand. Are you able to 
to indicate anything along those lines. I just don't want us to spend too much time on whether you agree with the exact figure that they give, because maybe even if you don't agree with the exact figure, nevertheless, you are able to concede that such equipment would not be less than a certain amount. Thanks, uh, Chairperson. I, I, I am of the view that the figures that are given here are not correct. And the estimation that I did when I had to respond to this particular query was also justifiably a fair price for the equipment. But the rest, which is appearing in 95.1, there are no supporting documents. It's just somebody's calculation. I wanted to see a works order. I want to see log books. I want to see the people signing on and off my site and, and a number of things in order to justify what he is talking to here. That's why I say the, the 95.1, 95.2 up to 96 and 98 are a little bit of a while. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so is your position that uh, as far as you are concerned, the cost for the equipment that was installed in your house would be about the amount that you were quoted uh, by, or est that was estimated or quoted by Mr. Sivion Tlamini? Is that where you stand? Yes. Okay. Yes, Chair. And and what is the basis for your thinking that that is what that equipment would cost, or would have cost them? It's based on the quotations that I had to do to do a comparative pricing of the similar equipment that was in the house, which is referred on my statement. Okay. All right, Miss Mulefe. I'm not sure that. Uh, you can take this particular matter further. It may well be that to the extent that is necessary, maybe some other person with the right qualifications in the sector, in the security sector, who knows prices, may look at the equipment and give uh, an indication by way of an affidavit what the equipment would have cost in 2017. That is an order, Chair. Yeah. Thank you. Let's then move, Mr. Gingana, to the payment of the installation. You earlier indicated um, just after your opening that you had requested Mr. Dlameni for an invoice. Did I have that correctly? Yes. And did you ever receive an invoice from Mr. Dlamini? Yes, Chair. No, Chair. Okay, please confirm what your answer is. Are you saying that no, you did not receive an invoice from Mr. Dlamini? No, I did not receive an invoice from Mr. Dlamini. And did you ever follow up with him for an invoice? Yes, I did follow up with him on several occasions. And did he respond to your queries for an invoice? He, 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 he actually responded and said he's going to come back to me and when he get the invoice from his office. Now, during the time that you're speaking to Mr. Dlamini about the invoice, were you still communicating with him on a friendly basis? Yes. And as at this time where you are asking for the invoice and it's not forthcoming, did you still have Mr. Richard LaRue's contact number? I hope it was still there because it was saved on my phone, which I was using to send him a message. Did you ever attempt to contact Mr. Richard LaRue about the invoice? 
No, I had nothing to do with Mr. Leru in terms of the invoice. Now, you indicate in your statement that to date you have not received the invoice. Is that correct? That's correct. And your position, as I have understood, is that even to date you are still willing to pay. Is that correct? That is correct. When the allegations were raised by Mr. Richard LaRue, um, implicating you in this stream of evidence, did you ever make any further attempt to make the payment or to pursue an invoice? Okay, by the time, uh, I think it was somewhere the first week of September, and I tried to communicate with uh, Mr. Lamini to still pursue him to say, hey, I want my invoice, what's happening? I was, you know, in the dark, not knowing. I said, guys, I'm going to use money. Money can be utilized for other priorities that may come as emergencies. So that week of the 5th of September, I received uh, a message from, uh, I think it's Kyle Cohen, who is an investigative journalist, uh, asking me questions around the affidavit of Mr. Leru, which of now I have just picked up that he was referring to that same affidavit because the same questions he was wanting me to clarify are the same. Then I telephoned immediately to Mr. Lamin and I said, Mr. Lamin, there's somebody who's calling me and wanting information and has written me an SMS as I am busy in class now. What is happening here? That's where I had to, you know, say, I'm now having a concern about this. If now there's media participation in an issue that I was awaiting an invoice. Thank you. Right. So earlier you mentioned to the chair um, that you concede that it was Basasa that installed the equipment. Um, do you know which particular subsidiary of Bosasa would have installed the equipment? I have since learned that it was Sondol. Is it Sondol? Yeah. Yeah, Sondol. It is that it's Sondol. Sondol IT. But as at the point yeah. where you are pursuing the invoice, the only knowledge that you had was that the company concerned was Bosasa. That was my understanding at the time, and I was uh, expecting an invoice from Musasa. I did not know how their operations work. Now, when you're not getting an invoice from Mr. Dlamini, did you ever try to um, contact the offices of Musasa? No. Is there any particular reason why not? It's because he was promising that he will come back to me. He's busy coordinating and organizing it. And that was the only person that I had a link with regards to the security system. So since the year 2017 to today, and we're in the year 2021, um, all you've had were promises of an invoice from Mr. Dlamini that was um, to be provided to you. Yes. And you have made no means to either approach Basasa or find other alternative means by yourself to pay for the for the installment, for the security system installments, installations. Well, well, as it is public knowledge that immediately after that article of the 9th of September in the city press. There was also a turmoil at Usasa. I couldn't get hold of Mr. Lamini, and he was all over working. If I send him a message, hey, can you please come back to me because we need to resolve this issue. And I couldn't get hold of them, and his company went under with whatever they could say. There's a number of things that have happened that have hindered me from getting my invoice.
So the last time you spoke to Mr. Dlamini about the invoice is last year. Yes. All right. Now, the last allegation that Mr. LaRue has made is that the special project was labeled Project Prasa, and as you were said to have been the head of procurement at Prasa. Have you been employed at Prasa? I was seconded at Prasa on the 1st of October 2015. We had a tripartite agreement between myself, my employer, and the National Treasury, which requested the second met. Can I refer you to... Uh, Ms. Mulefe, I just want you, the two of us, to have an idea when, how long you still are going to be. Are you able to give me an estimate? Yes, Chair, this is actually the last point, and I think it should take about 10 minutes. Okay, all right. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Gingana. I'm referring you to your statement. That's that bundle with the application, bundle T19. Are you there? Do you have it, Mr. Gingana? I am. Thank you. I am there. Great, I'm referring you to the red paginated number nine and the black paginated numbers chair would be page 11. At paragraph, okay. thank you, at paragraph 25 to 27, well, more particularly 26, you set out your employment history in the public procurement space, is that correct? Yes. Can you just give um, the chair in brief uh, an exposition of your employment history in procurement? My last position or can you during give the, the chair a summary? Comment? I'm sorry, I, can you give the chair a summary of what you set out at page 20? At paragraph 25 and 26, insofar as your employment in pub in the public space as a procurement employee. Uh, Ms. Miller, I'm not sure that I okay. know that. I've read that. You might need just to cover when he was employed by Prasa or yes. when, what what time she he spent at Prasa. Yes. That might do. That should be enough. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Gingana, you confirm in your statement that at paragraph 25, you state that you were seconded from the South African, let me just get the name right, bear with me, the South African Civil Aviation Authority um, to the Passenger Rail Agency of South Africa, being PRASA, around October 2015 until October 2016. Is that correct? That's correct. And you say that this was in the position of acting chief procurement officer. Is that correct? That's correct. And then you go on to set out your duties. Moving down to paragraph 26, you then say that from November 2016 to July 2017, you were then seconded to National Treasury in the office of the chief procurement office. Is that correct? That's correct. Other sure. than these two positions that you have set out, have you held any other office in the public sector um, as a procurement officer or employee? I've been appointed, I've been at CAA for almost 20 years, Chair. Sure. And then I was seconded to these two entities in those years that I've reflected on. Okay. Yes. Then you have provided to the commission a supplementary affidavit. Is that correct? 
that's correct. And in this particular supplementary affidavit, you deal with two issues, is that correct? That's correct. Chair, we've been provided with a copy um, of the supplementary statement, which I will beg leave to hand up. What does it deal with? Because if it deals with his employment, it's not really necessary. If it seeks to correct what was correct when he deposed to his first affidavit, that should not be corrected because it's correct. Yes. In this supplementary um, affidavit here, Mr. Gingana basically speaks about how he was dismissed because of unfounded allegations that were made by Mr. Richard LaRue. Um, he also talks about how he challenged his dismissal at the CCMA and that his case went as far as arbitration. He attaches a copy of the CCMA award um, and he says there that the arbitrator found that his dismissal was substantively unfair and awarded a three-month compensation. He has taken the commissioner on review since what he wanted was reinstatement and compensation. Then the second point that he deals with is the periods within which he was employed at PRASA, which is what we've just covered now. He, says, he states here that he was employed by PRASA during October 2015 to 2016. He then attaches his employment contract. Um, he then also talks about having been employed at National Treasury, as we have covered here. Um, he then talks about how Mr. Richard LaRue, having named the project of installing the security system at his house, Project Prasa, was premised on a lie that led to his dismissal. And he goes on to say that the impression that is, is created is that he was working at Prasa and as such received security upgrades as a benefit for some companies linked with Basasa, who wanted, um, that wanted contracts from Prasa. However, he says, this could not be so because I had ceased, he had ceased to be empl an employee of PRASA at the time of the upgrades. Um, okay. So that's basically what the supplementary okay. deals with Chen. You can hand it up. I must apologize that it's not stable, Chair. We could not find a staple in the venue, and yeah. we received it this morning. Okay. Um. Has Mr. Leroux been given a copy? A copy is available for Mr. Leroux's. Uh, do you want to go through the formalities to get Mr. Kinga to confirm what needs to be confirmed? Or Thank have you, you just done that? Um, Mr. Gingana, I trust that you were following. We, I have just handed up your... Yes, I've confirmed. Thank you. I've handed up your supplementary statement. On page five of that statement, or rather page four of that statement, is it your signature that appears on that statement? That is my signature that appears on the statement. And the date of... And that is now the signature on top of your name, eh? because there is another signature on the same page. On top of my name, Chair Yeah, okay. Thank you. And the date of the 23rd of June 2021, is that the date on which you signed the statement? Yes, Chair Chair, with your leave, I would request, and do you confirm the correctness of the contents of the statement? I can confirm the correctness of the statement, Chair Thank you. Chair, with your leave, might it be entered into evidence as Exhibit T19.1? Didn't we have T19.1 already? I think we did. I'm sorry, T19.4. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Are we making T19.4, Chair? Yes. Uh, the statement of affidavit deposed to by Mr. Kingana, Mulelo Babalo Kingana, uh, on the 
23rd September 2021, together with its annexures, is admitted as an exhibit and will be marked as Exhibit T 19.4. I'm Thank not you. going to slot it into the file that should be arranged after it's been paginated. Thank you, Chair. Okay, all right. Then finally, um, Mr. Gingana, Chair, might I refer you to bundle T34. This is a bundle that we have not referred to. Uh, it, I think that will be confusing if you call it bundle. The exhibit, the, the, exhibit mark yeah. T34, thank you. Yeah, I think if you refer us to the page, uh, that's, that's on black number 165, is that right? That is and correct, And yeah. the affidavit of Mr. Thamini starts at 167, black number. That is correct, Chair, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. Chair, this is a statement that was provided to the Commission by Mr. Mfanafuti Sivian Dlamini. Yes. And it was in response to the Chair's directive in terms of Regulation 10.6. Yes. There are just two matters in this affidavit that I'd like to deal with. Yeah. Um, but before doing so, might we enter it into evidence um, as Exhibit T, as it has been marked here, as Exhibit T34? Mr. Mfana Fortis, if you understand me, is affidavit that started 167, will be admitted as Exhibit T34. Thank you, Chair. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kingana, can I refer you to page, the red numbered page 6 of that Exhibit T34? Page 6. I'm going there. I am there, Chairperson. Thank you. And Chair, the black numbering is 172. Yes. I'm referring you to paragraph 28 of Mr. Dlamini's statement, where he deals with what he has titled as Project Prasa. Do you see that? <coughs> uh, correct. See in, that. Thank you. In his statement, Mr. Damini confirms to have met you at a security exhibition held at Gallagher State during approximately 2014, where, where after you became social friends. Do you see that? At paragraph 29. Yes, I can see that. Do you confirm this? Uh, yes, I can confirm that. Mr. Pornofer, don't you want to go straight to what may be important or in dispute because that part is not in dispute. He said earlier on that's how they met. Well, Mr. Um, Jamini's statement chair is um, in most parts confirmatory to yeah. Mr. Jamini's statement. In fact, all he does is to also dispute the allegations by Mr. LaRue in so far as Project Prasa. Yes. Now, he also deals with um, Mr. Mr. Agrizi's allegations um, yes, in the statement. Insofar as uh, he, his version is not in conflict with Mr. Kinnana's version, you don't need to go through it. I don't need to place yeah. it on record. Yeah. Right. No, thank you, Chair. Only if there are issues there which you think have got some significance that you want to put to Mr. Kinnana, insofar as they may be inconsistent with his version. But if you, if there is nothing that you see as inconsistent with his version, you don't have to put that to, put that to him. Thank you, Chair. I do have just one question. Yeah. Um, in paragraph 44 of that statement, Mr. Gingana, it's the rate number eight. Yes, I can see 44. And it's the black numbering 175. There, Mr. Glamini says that during installation of Mbulelo's security upgrade, LaRue, Agrizi, and I once met at Mbulelo's house while Mbulelo was at work as Agrizi wanted to demonstrate the upgrade. Are you aware of the events that are stated there? Yes, I am aware because he was there 
And the lady who worked in my house confirmed that. Okay. Is there anything else that you wish to bring to the attention of the chair? Well, uh, I, I must thank the chairperson for the indulgence and uh, allowing me time after two years of a marathon of postponements of uh, the cross-examination. I appreciated the fact that I came and ventilated exactly what transpired, which was being misconstrued by the media, which has uh, negative publicity. I want to confirm one thing, Jefferson. I am a supply chain professional. I have 30 years of experience in this game. I've been involved in this big, very complicated supply chain, chain transactions. And it must not be misconstrued that when somebody is doing his personal work, it is assumed because you are in supply chain, you must be getting a kickback of whatever nature. I have never ever been bribed Jefferson. I'm anti-corruption Jefferson. I'm not corruptible Jefferson, as it was assumed and uh, concocted by the statements that were gone through here. I am a professional in this field. That's why I was seconded to these areas of expertise. I had to lose my job because of an allegation. You can go back to my history of 20 to 30 years. I had seven years of clean audit, Chairperson, which I must emphasize, they are of importance. I've presented papers in, 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 in supply chain uh, forums. I'm a member of uh, the supply chain uh, uh, companies that are registering us. So it was very unfortunate that supply chain in this country went to the deterrent of being manipulated to a level by the suppliers. And some of these things have resulted into this commission being set up. Chairperson, I must thank you with your colleagues and the cooperation that I got and the opportunity that I was given before the commission ceases uh, its existence in terms of uh, your work. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, Mr. Kingana. Um, I did have one or two questions before I check whether your council uh, wishes to re-examine you. Uh, my questions relate to this. There is a, a dispute between yourself and Mr. Akrizi where you say, where Mr. Akrizi says he did meet you in your house and you say that never happened. Uh, you remember that dispute between the two of you? What are you referring to, Chairperson, in terms of the banding, if I may ask? Uh, I'll, I'll, we'll go ahead and have a look. Uh, Mr. Agrizi, you remember even Ms. Mulefe uh, uh, told you this, that Mr. Agrizi said he had been to your house and he met you, and I think you said no, that never happened. You remember that? Oh, you don't remember? I remember that. that. Yes. Ms. Mulefe, if, do you remember if, where I would if find If I can that? assist you. Yeah. These were the allegations of Mr. Richard LaRue. And that appears at in bundle T19. T19, yes. The red page 15. But I thought, I thought Mr. Leroux is confirming what Mr. Akrizi said, or did Mr. Akrizi not say that? Well, there is a version by Mr. Agrizi yes. that has not yet been put. Um, well, I want to put, is that in the supplementary? No, it's in exhibit S14. Where is exhibit F14? Because Mr. Ingana must know that uh, there is that version. If he is not able to deal with it, he can tell me. Where is Exhibit 14? Exhibit 14 chair appears in the bundle from the black numbered page 160. 160. 
Jefferson, can I come in? Yes, come in. Jefferson, the yes. exhibit S14 yes. was submitted. I happened to know about it yesterday. I never got an opportunity to go through it and put a supplementary affidavit for it. Uh, hang on one second. Uh, I'll talk to you just now, Mr. Kingana. Ms. Mulefe, you said S14. Exhibit S14. Yeah, that's Mr. Agris' supplementary affidavit. Yes. It's now, where is the affidavit that he was supplementing? This is Mr. Agris' supplementary affidavit. He was supplementing his main affidavit, as yeah. I understand. Yeah, now, in his main affidavit, he did speak about Mr. Inanna, did he not? Not in his main affidavit. Can I refer you to, mm. to paragraph three of this particular statement? Yes. At paragraph three, um, Mr. Agrisa refers to a previous statement that he made in April 2019. Mm. As I took over the leading of this matter, I engaged with Mr. Agrisa's counsel. Yes. And we mm. are yet to locate this particular statement, yes. which is one of the reasons that it has not yet been put to Mr. Gingana to, and, and him being afforded an opportunity to respond to it. Well, I may be mistaken, but I believe that Mr. Agris, when he gave his oral evidence, hang on, Mr. Kinana, when he gave his oral we'll cut off for some time. You can't hear me. Yeah, we we'll cut off for about five minutes. I'm still trying to reconnect. Okay. We but can... I can hear you now. Okay, we can hear you. So Thank you. my recollection, although it's quite some time back, is that Mr. Agrizi had in his oral evidence uh, referred to Mr. Dinana. I may be mistaken. There are too many witnesses I've had. Uh, Chair, I, I don't recall that particular piece yes. of evidence, but I do stand to be corrected and don't have to check. Yes, but because which the first... statement could not be traced is it his original statement? Mr. No, no, it's, it's the Rizzo. statement he refers to in paragraph three, that yes. April 2019 statement. That must, have, that, must be, that must be his, or it may have been his uh, second statement or his second set of statements, because he, uh, he had testified did he testify in 2018 or 2019? In 2019. In 2019. So but it, it, it may well have been his first if it was done in April. No, Chair. In this particular statement, he says that um, he was responding to Mr. Gingana's application. Um, and this, is, this would be Mr. Gingana's application to cross-examine Mr. Richard LaRue. So it was a statement that was specific to issues relating to Mr. Gingan. And this you could not trace within the time of Not it. within the commission, Chair. And, and, uh, and uh, his legal team didn't have Mr. Grizzis. When I spoke to them, they said that they would also check, but they could yeah. not locate it either. Okay, but in any event, Mr. Leroux has made the allegation that Mr. Grizzi um, did meet with Mr. Inanna and Mr. Leroux in the house, isn't it? Yes, that is. No, no Chairperson. Can I come in? Hang on, hang on. I'll come back to you, Mr. Kinana. Th that is where I was referring the chair to yeah, in, in, in Exhibit T19. Yes. At red page what number page? 15, and it's the black page number 17. Yes. That is paragraph 5 of Mr. Richard LaRue's statement. Mm -hmm. uh, and what is the black number page? The black number is 17, Chair. 117. 117. Oh. Okay. Uh, yes. And um, in that second paragraph, he says there that um, Mr. Mbulelo, pardon me, is not being honest with the commission in respect of denying that he knows or spoke to Mr. Egrisi as I was present at the house on a Saturday afternoon when both Mr. Egrisi and Mr. Dlameni had a meeting with Mr. Mbulelo and I waited outside the premises only after I was requested to go and do a survey of the house once the meeting had been concluded. 
I remember specifically as Mr. Agrisi fetched me in a gold Maserati, and I went with him to the house in order to do a survey of what security equipment was needed. Yes, that's what I want to ask him about. Thank you, Chair. That's, that's in, in Mr. Leroux's affidavit. This is Mr. Leroux's affidavit. Which uh, Mr. Kingana did get and uh, uh, has dealt with. Yes. Yes. What, what you are saying is that we don't have, uh, you have not been able to trace an affidavit by Mr. Agrisi where he says the same thing, where he confirms this. Yes, Chair. Okay, all right. Okay. Um, Mr. Kinnana, Mr. Richard, Le, Mr. Richard Leroux says in the paragraph that Ms. Mulefe has read, which would be at your red page number 15, red page number 17, that Mr. Richard Leroux says that you do know Mr. Agrisi because he was present uh, at your house on a certain Saturday when Mr. Agrisi was there and you were there and he was there. And he says he waited outside uh, um, and only after he was requested to go in, did he go into the house. He says he was there to do a survey of the house. And he says he was allowed to go in after you and Mr. Agrisi had concluded your meeting. And he says he remembers this specifically because Mr. Agrisi had fetched him in a gold Maserati and he had gone with him to your house in order to do a survey of what security equipment you needed. Does this uh, uh, jog your memory at all or not? Chairperson, I, I responded to that. And I said, I've not met Mr. Agrisi in my house to discuss security issues. Uh, do you accept that it was Mr. Richard Leroux who conducted a survey of your house before the equipment could be installed, or do you not accept that either? Well, somebody did the survey, which can be Mr. Leroux. I wouldn't know, but the issue is he Leru, if he came to do the survey, he should confirm that. Yes. Well, he confirms that's what he's doing here. He says yes. he, he so went to do the survey. It was him who did the survey. Sorry, he's saying he was there to do the survey, and he had been fetched by Mr. Grizzly in his gold Maserati, and they both went to your house. He says it was a Saturday. And he says, you and Mr. Agrisi had a meeting in the house while he waited outside. And after the meeting had been concluded, he was then allowed to come in. You say nothing of that sort ever happened. There's nothing of that sort that has ever happened, Jefferson. And I dispute that. Yes. Now, Mr. Sylvian Lamin has said in his affidavit that he spoke to Mr. Agrisi uh, about the installation of uh, security in your uh, security equipment in your house. He also says in his affidavit, in regard to getting an invoice, that he approached Mr. Agrisi and asked for an invoice so that he could give it to you and Mr. Agrisi did not give him the invoice. He says he approached him a few, a few times or a number of times. Did you see that in his affidavit? I saw it, Chairperson. And he says the reason why he, didn't, he has never given you an 
an invoice is because Mr. Agrizi didn't give him an invoice. You saw that? I saw it, Chakase. From his affidavit, it seems clear to me, and I wanted to say whether you, it's clear to you as well that Mr. Agrizi was quite involved in the matter of the installation of security equipment in your house. Is that, is that the picture you get also when you read his affidavit? Well, because I, I couldn't even apply my mind and focus on what was written on, S, on this affidavit because it came very late. Therefore, I cannot be able to comment on the contents thereof. Yes. You see, these projects uh, at Busasa where security equipment was installed at the residences of certain people or government officials uh, that they, that Busasa identified uh, because Mr. Chris gave extensive evidence about these projects as well as people like Mr. Richard Leroux and I think others. They gave extensive evidence about these projects. Uh, when one has regard to that evidence, Mr. Agrizi was very involved in, in those projects. He might well be described as having been central uh, in those projects. Uh, is that something you are able to comment on or is that something you are not able to comment on? I'm not able to comment on that, Chairperson. Yes. Less to say that was their internal matter at Busasa on how they did whatever they wanted to achieve uh, and ultra motives that they were having. Yes, yes. So, but by virtue of, Ms., of the role that Mr. Agrizi played in this project, it would not be surprising if he did go to your house because uh, uh, he was quite, was playing quite a prominent role in the whole thing. You, you, you want to say yes, something? Yes, Jefferson, I have met and gone to, to the house, Jefferson. But what you are saying is that he never met you. That's what you are, that's your point. Yeah, that's my point of departure. Yes. Because we had never, ever had any arrangement around the security system. Yes. Yes. Now, Mr. Leroux appears the to be... The I had an agreement with... Okay, sorry, Chairperson. Yes, Mr. Mr. Leroux seems... Mr. Leroux seems very clear that Mr. Akris did meet you. We have just read the the paragraph where he deals with this. Do, do, do you think he is mistaken or do you think he's fabricating this meeting that you say never took place? I, I wouldn't know his ultra motives, Chaperson, mm. because what I have picked up in the whole of this saga mm. is that there is some movement which was concocting and targeting certain individuals for their ultra motives, mm. of which Leroux was participating in that scheme and mm. agrees himself. Mm. But uh, is the position that prior to the installation of the security equip equipment in your house and the preparations that preceded the installation, you, you never knew Mr. Richard Leroux, is that correct? Or did you know him? I did not know him, Chairperson. I've disposed uh, uh, on my affidavit. Yes. I've so, so. Completed exactly when the events happened. So, if he is falsely implicating you in something wrong, you have no reason why he is doing this. Or do you? Well, he is the one, that's why I applied to cross-examine him, mm. that he must explain exactly why is this, 
which resulted in me losing my job of 20 years. Mm. Yes. Well, based on Mr. Akrizi's evidence and other witnesses from Busasa, it may well be that if you were not party to any wrong arrangement for wrongdoing, it may well be that Busasa may have had plans to, to, to use you. Maybe that never happened uh, because the evidence that's before the commission is suggests that they were doing these projects of installing security equipment in respect of people that they believed could strategically assist their businesses. So if, 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 you, if there was wrongdoing in which you were involved, uh, then it's one thing, but if there wasn't, maybe it's possible that it was part of a plan that might never have materialized other than that the installation, the equipment was installed. Do you want to say anything? Chairperson, now I am actually checking the whole thing, why my invoice was not issued out. And if you look at the puzzle, yes, there may have been a plan that was concocted because of the nature of the job that I'm doing. But unfortunately for them, I want to explicitly address this to them. So that in the future, even in the country, they must understand that you will not be able to bribe a secure, a, a secure environment like the supply chain. Supply chain is a process, Chairperson. And supply chain, you have to go A to Z. You cannot jump certain areas. Therefore, if there are plans and plots that was meant to induce me to do the wrongful thing. I cannot sacrifice my 30 year career for an alarm system. Mm. Yes. Lastly, on, on uh, your version, uh, the arrangement was always on the basis that you were going to pay for the uh, security equipment. You asked for an invoice. Mr. Mulelo, Mr. Sivion confirms that you asked for an invoice. He says he asked Mr. Akris for an invoice. He confirms that he never gave you an invoice because Mr. Akris never gave him an invoice. Um, that, that, that is the, the one version. And then there is the division that is uh, also, uh, which would be that this was done all as part of uh, special projects. So uh, your version is you have always been prepared to pay. They just didn't give you an invoice, but they, there's evidence that this was part of the special projects. I guess your position is simply that you know nothing about special projects. Is that right? I don't know anything about special projects, Chairperson. Yes. Of course, what does emerge maybe is that uh, a, a lot of money was spent, whether, whether one is looking at 50,000 rand or 40,000 rand or 200,000 in terms of the cost of the equipment and the installation. A lot of money was, was uh, spent on the equipment. And for some reason, this company just didn't give you an invoice over a long period of time, despite your insisting that you wanted an invoice. That, that, is, that is what uh, happened, is that correct? You see, Chaperson, the best people to be answering some of these things 
in order for me to be satisfied is Leru and his team who were actually coming to my house and he stated in his affidavit when he was there on the 31st of January that they were coming with unmarked cars. It means they had a plan to destroy people's lives. They were part of a, a syndicate that was planning to ensure that they destroy the officials that are supposed, are supposed to implement compliance in this country. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Kingana. Nothing around. Thank you, Tim. No further questions. Okay. Counsel for Mr. Kingana, I, did you intend to re examine? Well, Mr. Commissioner, just a few questions, but can I just converse with my attorney yeah. on, that, on that note? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Can I stand just in a bit? I'm struggling with my feet. Yes, it's fine. it's fine. It's fine. Yes. I'm here. I'm, I'm watching. Yeah, okay. Okay, I let you uh, ask from where you are if your mic is working. That's yes. why it's going to work quicker. Okay, all right, Mr. Kingana, your your counsel is going to ask you two questions in re-examination. Yes, you may go ahead. Yes, um, Mr. Mbulelo, you've mentioned that um, you were aware that the security system was being installed by Busasa. I beg your counsel, advocate. You, you mentioned that the security, you were, you were aware that the security system in your house I'm, was... I'm sorry, I'm sorry, counsel. Yes. Let me check with the technicians whether they can hear you properly oh, okay. so that you, you will, whether you are recorded. Okay. okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Commissioner, this, this chair is, is in the way, so I can't... The, the mic is more on the left, so okay, I think then I'm unable go, to... Go to the podium then. I think okay. go to the podium. Somebody will sanitize. Or have they brought you another mic. one? There's okay. another mic on, on my right. Okay, uh, all right. Yes, I'm not sure if this one is audible. No, it should be fine. Yes. Yeah. I can hear you. Yes, okay. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Yes, um, Mr. Mbulelo, you mentioned that um, you were aware that the security system installed in your house was installed by Busasi. Yes. Remember that? You've also mentioned that as far as you um, were aware, the person that you were dealing with, um, as far as the system is concerned, was uh, Mr. Dlamini. Yes. You mentioned that you met Mr. Dlamini at a security expo. Yes. Yes. Um, so at the time when you met him, did you guys discuss anything uh, concerning security? This, uh, no, we just met. I looked at what was there, yes. and we exchanged numbers. We didn't go into detail. Did you know the company that he was working for at the time when you met him in 2014? Well, at the time, there were a number of companies that were in the display area. I didn't really bother to look at the names that were on the podium. Now, you casually communicated with him, as you have mentioned earlier, uh, throughout the, year, the, the years, up until 2016. Yes. Yes. Now, in, in your communications, um, when did the security issue come up? Did it come up? Uh, it was when, 
it was when we communicated that we were going to meet in my house. Yes, and, and when is this? 2016. Okay, so for the first time you discussed the security issue in 2016 at your house? Yes. And um, why is the security system only installed in 2017? That's the question I want to understand because uh, it was agreed that we are going to install after September, but because the year was uh, almost over, then it was only installed in April. I was ready for installation after September. Okay, so when, when, when you discussed the security issue with uh, Mr. Dlamini at your house, did he mention that the security would be installed by Busasa? No. Who did he say would be installing the system in your house, as you understood it? In my understanding, he actually said they will come and do the installation. So I took it, it is his company as he's the director of a company. I never knew who is going to use subsidiaries or whoever. And by his company, which company did you think that he would uh, he, he was representing? I thought he was representing Busasa. So at that stage, you knew that he would be uh, the, the 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 system would be installed by Busasa. Yes. At the time of the installation, you mentioned that you were no longer at uh, Prasa. You were actually at at. Um, National Treasury. That's correct. Did you know whether um, the name of the project or what they called this uh, installation project at your house? Well, I saw the name when I was uh, given the rule tree tree to respond. And also on the Sunday newspaper, which was written by Kyle Cohen. Okay, um, so finally, um, when we go to um, T19, well, actually T34, which is Mr. Dlamini's statement, and specifically at page uh, 8, paragraph 44. Paragraph 44. Mr. Commissioner, my apologies. I said two questions, but uh, they're leading to more questions. This is my last question. Um, paragraph 44 reads, during installation of Mbulelo security upgrade, Leru, Agrizi, and I once met at Mbulelo's house while Mbulelo was at work, as Agrizi wanted to demonstrate the upgrade. You see that? Yes, I can see that. Did you know about this meeting that happened at your house between the three? Yes, I was informed by Mr. Tlamin. And when did he, Mr. Tlamin inform you about this? He told me before they went to the house, but I told him I was away. I was busy at work at the time. Just a second, uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Commissioner, my attorney is just giving me uh, instructions on something here. So did you know that Agrizi will be at the house uh, together with the two, with Leroux and uh, Mr. Damini? No, I was not aware until he told me. So you only knew after the fact that Mr. Agrizi did uh, come to your house at the time? Yes. Mr. Commissioner, that will be my question. Thank you. OK. Thank you, we. We, we are going to take uh, the lunch adjournment, and then after lunch, uh, I will allow Mr. Kingana's counsel to cross-examine Mr. Leroux. And uh, once we are done with that, then it will be Mr. Agrizi, who will be cross-examined by Mr. Wakeford's counsel. We'll adjourn and we'll resume at two. We adjourn.